Hello again and welcome to the latest bulletin from Haverhill UK News brought to you by Haverhill TV. In the news for today, Tuesday June the 18th, a Haverhill County Councillor has accused Suffolk and St Edmundsbury of treating Haverhill like a garden shed. Burglars have targeted a series of garages on the Parkway Estate and got away with a haul of fishing and golfing gear. And how a league championship footballer returned to Castle Manor recently to look around his old, old school. One of Haverhill's new county councillors has accused local authorities of treating Haverhill as the garden shed of Suffolk, where they can put the stuff they don't want to see around the house. Councillor Tony Brown, recently elected UKIP member for Haverhill, praised the recent transport meeting but said there was negativity there from people who didn't live in the town and have to suffer its disadvantages. Councillor Brown said in a public letter this week that a light railway or guided busway to Cambridge was a minimum requirement. He wrote, It was very encouraging to have a meeting last week to talk over the possibility of rail-enhanced transport links for the town. The town council must be congratulated for hosting and promoting the meeting. It was very well attended with maybe the largest concentration of the people that plan for our future transport needs, business folk and public representatives in one room for a long time. There was a mixture of great enthusiasm and pessimism. The there's no money will never happen mentality. The negative view seemed to mainly come from people that didn't actually live in the town and didn't have to put up with the congested and dangerous A1307 on a daily basis. A light railway or guided busway as a minim is a minimum. There is no use laying on more buses as they will just get snarled up on the congested A1307 or stuck in the early morning traffic queue into Cambridge. And he goes on, as I've said before, most of the people that make the big decisions and have the power about our future do not live in the town and do not have to put up with the lack of health provision, transport and decent high street facilities. Haverhill seems to be the garden shed of Suffolk. You know, the thing out of the way at the bottom of the garden where you put the things that you don't want cluttering up your nice house or garden, i.e. 3,000 houses. And the only tender loving care that we get is the occasional coat of creosote. Garage burglars have been at work again this time on the Parkway Estate last week. Overnight on Wednesday to Thursday they targeted four garages and although they got nothing from three of them, the fourth one yielded a haul of £3,500 worth of fishing and golfing equipment. Two of the break-ins, including the one where the items were stolen, were in Warwick Court and the other two in Belsey Court. Police are appealing for information from anyone who saw anything suspicious that night or anyone who has been offered cheap fishing or golfing equipment to contact them. And you can contact PC Jane Mangnall at Haverhill Police on 101 or Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800 555 111. The organisation which has taken over from the discredited NHS Suffolk is to have a stand at an event in Haverhill on Saturday. The West Suffolk Clinical Commissioning Group will have an information stand at the Haverwell Community Wellbeing Fund's Family Fun Day at Haverhill Rugby Club grounds. The fund is the brainchild of Haverhill Town Councillor Betty McClatchy and the event aims to raise money for diagnostic equipment, youth physical activities equipment and community wellbeing projects in the town. The fun day is from 12 noon to 5pm and will include a car boot sale, children's fancy dress, hobby horse racing and other fate-like activities. And now for some more of your comments in our weekly feature Sound Off. Subjects covered this week include shop rents in the High Street, Vision 2031, the Elm Trees at the Sports Centre, Travellers in the Town and real-time information saga at the bus station. JXB has a swipe at the shop landlords. Who would in their right mind want to spend £100,000 a year on a shop in Haverhill before you even start to pay out for wages, stock, lighting etc and then hope to make a profit? Greedy landlords. No wonder most of the shops are thinking about calling it a day when this is the sort of amount they charge. Look at the land registry and you'll find that each shop is owned by a different limited company, but strangely, a lot have the same directors listed. Inspector Peter Ferry answers insinuations made about the crime wave and the presence of travellers in the town. He says, The travellers have left Haverhill and were last seen heading towards Bury. They were, I believe, the same family who always visit Haverhill at this time of year. We have a traveller liaison officer at Haverhill, PC Will Wright, and he went to speak to the family a couple of days ago. I'm not aware of any problems of damage or litter caused by the family during their stay this time. 
St Edmundsbury are used to dealing with the family when they arrive in town and have a set of processes in place which makes their stay as smooth as possible for both the family and nearby residents. And TB, that's Councillor Tony Brown, says, Read the bus station real-time information signs. I've been chasing Suffolk County Council, as have Will Austin and Anne Gower. They keep fobbing us off by saying that they're looking into it. I'll chase them for an answer again this week. I've got a bit of a feeling that they may have spent the budget elsewhere and are having trouble owning up to it. He also raises the subject of the rare elm trees at the sports centre, supposedly protected in the cinema area plan six years ago. He says, it still makes me angry how our borough council sanctioned the desecration of that beautiful stand of trees. No other town in the country, as far as I know, had a row of elm trees left alive like that. They now look like a row of stunted Leylandi, instead of graceful trees with branches pointing skywards. All for a KFC that they moved the position of anyway after it was too late. Some of them look like they're dying now. And I Like Trains has added, they were some of the oldest elms in Suffolk. Now at least three of them are dead. Pollarding has ruined them. Surrounding them in tarmac couldn't have done them much good either. And poor old Hal Revy is wrestling with the Vision 2031 document. He says, Just been having a little glance at Vision 2031. Soon started pulling my hair out. Some huge developments are proposed, but no detail. Northwest development and suckling plus bypass. I could not find a proper map. How can you study the proposal when there are no decent maps? The map they have must have been done by a five-year-old child. JXB is even more forthright. So much for those rubbish so-called planning experts in SEBC, he says. They need kicking out, not just some councillors for agreeing to the plan. How do we go about that? And of course, keep these comments coming to www.haverhill-uk.co.uk and go to the message boards uh, and the one that's called Local Issues. And finally, a former pupil of Castle Manor, who is now a Charlton Athletic defender, returned to the school to have a look round recently. Michael Morrison grew up in Haverhill, honing his skills on local football fields and with the school football team. He left Castle Manor in 2004 and was signed by Cambridge United the following year. From there he moved on to Leicester and then to Sheffield. In 2011 he joined Charlton Athletic, where he is currently a regular player and vice-captain. Recently, Michael invited Madeleine Vigar, principal of the Castle Partnership, who he remembered joining Castle Manor when he was in year 11, to attend a Charlton Athletic match, along with her dad, who is a lifelong Charlton fan. After having a great day out there, Madeleine returned the compliment with an invite to him to look round the academy. He had a packed visit, touring both Place Farm and the Castle Manor Academy campus. He also spent some time looking at the site, where the Trust plans to build a new all-through academy, when they can secure the funding. And he'll be coming back to Castle Manor for their Year 11 graduation to help celebrate their success. Well, that's all for today, but join us again on Friday. And meanwhile, keep in touch by going to www.haverhill-uk.co.uk or following us on Twitter. Now, what's the weather going to do for the rest of the week?